Yes. So the two games, first one was the Artemia Vladislav Magnus Carlsen game. Now Magnus was white in this. And I think this was round one. And here we felt that he's going to have a good event because he just seemed to outplay uh, in a position which otherwise would, to a lot of us, to mere mortals like myself, would feel impossible to make something out of. And I think what we were very impressed from in this game was simply how he uh, managed to create magically in a position where it was hard to imagine what was going on, uh, something so amazing. And it was a queen pawn ending, which was anyway very impressive. Now, this started as a reti, and this is definitely a surprise that Magnus has in his uh, opening arsenal for this game. Uh, for this tournament because he played it throughout day one and here he played a pretty rare move b3 this isn't played that much usually in this position white either goes for d3 or for d4 so b3 is pretty rare anyway but artamiev handled it pretty well knight c6 the bishop comes out and all of this feels fine so we're going to go on uh, with the game because i want to really quickly get you to the key points which are so instructive and really why this game stood out for us. So the knights were exchanged. And this was the first moment where I thought B4 was a brilliant move, trying to create a weakness, uh, taking advantage. So trying to create a strategic weakness by taking advantage of uh, a tactical motive. So what white looks like he's giving up a pawn, but can black actually take this pawn? And the question is no, because take a look at this really pretty motive. White goes knight c6, you're attacking the rook. And if you go rook d7, trying to defend the a7 pawn, bishop e5 actually traps the queen. So that was a really pretty idea, I thought. And after b4, uh, if you take the pawn, knight c6, if you move here, trying to keep the queen a square on d7, white picks up this pawn. And this is better for white because of black's pawn structure. So b4 was a really nice idea, trying to create something. But Artemia responded well. The game goes on. It's a pretty equal position. And we are talking about a world-class player like Artemia getting outplayed from here on. So everything got exchanged. Everything. I think if I had to pick a color here, I would probably pick black. Magnus trying to create something on the king side, trades off the rooks. And let's keep going. He plays in the center. Once again, very active play here uh, by Magnus with these three pawns, the pawns rolling down the board. And eventually, Artemiev also started rolling down the queen side pawns. And this is where it gets fun. Magnus first trades off the only active piece in Artemiev's position, the light squared bishop. It's still a very equal position. And now queen c2. And this was just so amazing how he handled this queen pawn endgame, queen d7, because white had a nasty threat of queen c6, so black gives a check, and after king g2, brings the king to the center, closer to the d pawn, everything under control, and now queen c5. Very nice maneuver by white, because he first pushes black's king to the corner, make sure it's far away from the d5 pawn, and only then goes here rather than going directly. So super cool play. And this was a big mistake because now Magnus gets a check on e7. And if black goes back with the king, you give another check. And king g7, you pick up the spawn with a check. So in fact, surprisingly, at this moment, if we just go back to queen c5, the correct move was queen to a4, controlling the e8 square. After queen g4, it was a stunning conversion chat with queen e7, queen f8, and the brilliant move queen f3. And the point is that there will always be a mate, both sides queen at the same time. But Artemiev ends up getting checkmated from a position that one would just not believe this was a possibility.